book named Chunyi Liu, who is the uh, owner of the Guadagnini Violin Shop in downtown Chicago and does wonderful work uh, as a violin maker and a violin repair and bow hair. And he handles most of the instruments from the symphony, the Chicago Symphony. So good friend and uh, he's a, just a block away from the orchestra hall. So it's very- the Connecting is not so good right now. Hmm. Is anyone else having trouble? I think we're okay. So if you can hear me, then uh, feel free to begin. Yeah, I can hear you. But good. Okay, thank you very much for everybody coming. I mean, uh, my name is Chen Ye, as the player introduced. I have a Guadagnini violin shop. I'm the owner. So I'm today just to introduce some uh, maintenance for uh, string instrument player. Uh, you, you guys are all violin players, so yeah. <laughs> so uh, first of all, uh, if any, anybody has uh, any question for the maintaining their instrument, your instrument, or you know how to, you know, check the instrument if it's open or seem open or uh, fifths. I mean, uh, sometimes the string is false. Those those things, simple thing, but you can uh, can you guys uh, figure out how to do it or could could you please describe both of those things? How do you discover if your strings are false and how do you decide if your violin is open? Yes. You talk to me? Yes, yes. <laughs> okay, yes. Okay, I saw that you asked some other students. Yeah, you can just knock around. Uh, if it's, uh, you, most musicians can notice their instrument open because they are different, sound like uh, fuzzy, like, uh, <laughs> that's, yeah, like a fuzzy sound then must be somewhere open, like a seam open or near by the player area. Like uh, I have violin here. So usually most play like this area, touch, you know, the, the hands touch, you know, go to fifth position. You always, you know, touch the area, the C belt. I mean, the uh, belt, not C belt, but uh, there's most time they are open here. But sometimes I also open the chin rest, nearby chin rest. Your neck touches. The, it's the most problem is that because humidity goes in the seat, it opens. So it's kind of a, a wet, you know. Also, your uh, skin has a acid. So kind of, uh, kind of open. Also, the wear the varnish out, then the varnish is protect the, the instrument. So if it's varnish is sealed, then usually not the easy to open the seam, but usually wear out the varnish, then the moisture goes through the wood, the pores, then the opens the body, separates the glue joint. So the string, another question is the false string. Sometimes it, it, Sorry, could you s describe how you tap to yeah, find the- Yeah, I can just knock around. The edge, can you see it? Uh, okay. Oh, I think this one's open. Can you hear the sound? Different? Like this is solid, but here. I don't know if you can hear. My, I, I can hear something like, uh, yeah. Little bit the pushing sound, like uh, not the solid. So. Another thing is uh, uh, the, the fourth string, but you can just tell by the plug string itself. Sometimes the, the pitch goes down, like a like lower, then, then the string is false. But you can also use the as you said last time, you mentioned the uh, octave, play the two finger and it goes to, for example, G and a D, you play the fifth. It was uh, playing two notes, it's accurate, good, 
and same position for the different strings, then it goes the other strings. If some string, is your finger is same, exactly same, but the, the string play, when you play the, the, uh, some other strings, not in tune, it's not your problem, but it's a string's problem. So that means the string are false. Of course, violinists like to blame themselves. So they usually say, oh no, I'm playing out of tune. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. So I, I usually go in third position, you know, and then you go, and then this one might be. Yeah, that and is the and E string or the A strings. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So. But is that possible sometimes that that happens because also because the bridge is twisted or crooked? Yeah, the bridge is twisted. Start the parallel with the, like a nut. For example, the E string this way, the G uh, on the G string, the bridge this way. So it's, it's not the, uh, parallel with the nut, so the string would be, uh, I mean, difficult to play in tune. So that can produce somewhat the same effect as false strings because your yeah. octaves aren't going to be even across all four. See, that's very important uh, for the bridge. If it's a bridge, you check the bridge. Also, uh, 90 degrees, the backside to to the, the edge of the violin, not it's, you can say like a surface of the body. The body. Actually, I will draw the pictures. For, I don't know if you can see the other side. Maybe it's too small, huh? I think it's too small. Let me move this towards this. That's good, yeah. See this? Can you see it? <laughs> yeah, so this, this on the 90 degrees, the backside, toward, toward the, P, the tailpiece and the fingerboard this side. So the backside is toward the, uh, it's at the near by the tailpiece, supposed to be 90 degree for this line, uh, for the, you can see the parallel with the joint. I mean, the, I don't know if you see that uh, clear. Uh, can you see? Uh, uh, yeah, sure. it's, it's so side, back. Uh, with a parallel with this line, uh, uh, like a joint for the rib, or sometimes the twist. It's the older instrument, not accurate. But the most important is this line, with if it's degree. Uh, I move this line parallel to the, the top. So this supposed to be ninety degree for the bridge backside. So is, not not necessarily not necessarily ninety degrees to the table because the table might curve, right? That's right. Yes. Exactly, exactly right. So, another thing is talking about the tuning the strings. Over here. So, it is for, for now, is there anybody has a question for the, No, so far, so far, no, okay. Everything, everything's very clear so far. Okay, so another thing is that sometimes the ask, uh, people ask you, how do you keep the pegs uh, stay same place? It's sometimes uh, like a losing, you know, the, you, you, the pitch is not, I mean, the string keep losing. Slipping. Losing. Yeah, slipping. So how you keep the string, uh, the peg uh, uh, not slipping. So that also I have uh, last time also mentioned that too. So uh, winding the string against the peg wall as, uh, as close to the peg wall as possible, but not the too tight because it will break the peg wall. So it's just find the uh, right now, so this G against this side of the peg wall, the E against A also against this side of the peg wall. So also that I also draw the pictures. You can maybe see that too, so. So this, this one, okay, can you see it? Yes. So this is a, for violins, g -pad. So all the string uh, widening is this, not the end of to this way. I mean, the, the, uh, so this is 
close close to the peg wall this side. So the G side, then the you tune the G is tighter, the string gets tighter. So worm slips. So snug, but not too tight. Not too tight. Yeah, just uh, right to against the wall and then won't break the string, even not the too tight, but sometimes break the string, but it's just, you will know how tight is this. So just use the common sense. So you're not the, too tight. Yeah, you're exactly right. Good. <laughs> Good.